the day. In the U.S., markets will not open today because of the Memorial Day holiday. However, on Friday, stocks fell as geopolitical fears following President Donald Trump's move to cancel a key summit with North Korea weighed on solid corporate earnings. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 58.7 points to finish at 24,753.09, led lower by losses in Chevron and ExxonMobil. The S&P 500 declined 0.24% to finish at 2,721.33 amid continued losses in energy and financial stocks. Both sectors had been under pressure this week as a decline in oil prices weighed on industry leaders like ExxonMobil and Chevron, which closed down 3.5% on Friday. Lower interest rates, meanwhile, dragged on bank stocks. And in Asia, markets closed mixed today following positive weekend news regarding U.S.-North Korea relations. The Nikkei 225 eked out gains of 0.13% uh, to close at 22,481.09, and the broader topics edged down by 0.07%. South Korea's Kospi rose 0.74% to 2,478 points, triggered by optimism that a U.S.-North Korea meeting in June could hold despite being cancelled last week. Gains in the benchmark came as steelmakers and other manufacturing names advanced. POSCO added 2.31% and Hyundai Steel jumped 14.48%. Large cap technology name, however, finished lower. Greater China markets were mixed, with the Hang Seng Index gaining 0.76%. Mainland markets ended the day in negative territory, with the Shanghai Composite slipping 0.19%. The Shenzhen Composite closed lower by 0.22%. Australia's S&P ASS 200 also saw losses, finishing down 0.48%. And back here in Africa, Lagos Deep Offshore Logistic Base, Ledol, is more than a stock market listing and corporate bonds to expand its facilities and attract more business from major production companies. Although the privately owned company has not disclosed how much of the stocks and bonds to issue, the restructuring at the Nigerian Stock Exchange in the last few years seemed to have been an attraction for the company to consider tapping into public equity and debt markets, a move that may see the company raising capital within the next two years. Ledor aims to build more infrastructure on its roughly 100-hectare free trade zone in Lagos, and these would include roads, care walls, and fabrication equipment. And after reporting an 18% drop in full-year earnings, South Africa's biggest landline provider, Telcom AC, will sharpen its focus on mobile and data services. Telcom, which also provides information, communications and technology solutions, said headline earnings per share for the year to March 31 fell to 597 cents from 731.4 cents the previous year, hit by a higher tax rate and labor costs. Group earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization fell by 3.6%, while profit after tax declined by 19.2% to 3.2 billion rand. Telcom, in which the government plans to sell parts of its 39% stake, is also grappling with an economy that is barely growing and intense competition amid political and policy uncertainty and sovereign credit rating downgrades in 2017. Telcom declared an annual dividend of 355 cents per share, down 16.3%. And Botswana's telecoms regulators order that mobile phone companies cut fees they charge rivals to use their network by 41% has been endorsed by a local court. The ruling comes after Mascom, the country's biggest telecoms, uh, telecoms company, filed a court application last July, seeking to have the Botswana Communications Regulatory Authority's directive declared illegal, improper, and irrational. Mascom is one of three companies offering mobile phone services in Botswana, alongside Botswana Telecommunication Corporation and Orange Botswana. Botswana Communications Regulatory Authorities 
argues that there is no reason for mobile operators to charge higher mobile termination rates for calls across networks than for calls within their own networks. The new rule on fees will come into effect next month. And in Libya, production at Arabian Gulf oil company Agoko has returned to normal levels at 250,000 barrels per day after output losses caused by lower supply problems because of high temperatures. Production had fallen to less than 150,000 barrels per day on Wednesday after unusually hot weather caused the power supply problem. We'll be back in a moment. Do stay with us.